Let's look at the difference between one and two variable quantitative data. If I were to ask you how, how tall you are, I'm asking you a single question with a single answer. I just want your height, let's say in inches. And you would give me an answer that looks something like 66 inches, 59 inches, so forth. Every person I ask would give me one number as their answer. And because it's a number, it would be a quantitative distribution that is formed by all of the responses to my question. So again, we have only a single question. So I'm going to write this in here. We have one question, and it is quantitative. We're going to do the same thing again here. If I ask you how many siblings you have, it's the same exact idea. You're going to answer with some number. I have zero, I have one, I have three, whatever it might be. You answer with a single number, and every person I ask is going to answer with a single number. That's how many siblings I have. But now let's look at a slightly different question. What is your reading score and your age? Here I'm asking two different questions. Two different questions, and in this case, both of them happen to be quantitative, right? Reading score is a number, and your age would be a number. So two questions, both quantitative. And we'll just keep that here as a little note for ourselves. When we get data like this, our data comes in pairs. So reading score and age. In, in the same way that in an algebra class you would have an xy coordinate representing a single point, a single individual in this case here, you would do uh, the same with your data. You would take the, the answer to one of your questions, comma the answer to your other question. And so by pairing this data, each of these pairs represents a single person. Up here, 66 inches was one person. This two represented one person. Here, each of these pairs of numbers represents one person, one individual in our uh, in our study. When you have two questions that both have quantitative answers, you need to analyze your data differently than you would if you had a single one. If you had a single uh, quantitative variable, you would usually look at the mean, median, IQR, standard deviation. You'd want to get a sense of where is the middle, where is the spread. However, when you have two of them paired together, we're a lot more interested in the relationship that connects those two quantitative variables. What makes those two numbers uh, potentially predictable from each other? What do they have to do with each other? If I know one, what does that tell me about the other? It's the relationship that we care about, not exactly uh, what, what the middle is or how far spread apart the numbers are. So when we look at reading score and age again, these points here, we have an opportunity to do something with those points in order to study that what that relationship is. And the easiest way to do that is to do exactly what we would do in algebra with a coordinate pair, and that's to graph it. So each of these points, if we put it on a graph, we would call that graph a scatter plot. And so now we're going to look a little bit more into the details of how scatter plots actually work.